Well, it might be the most mystifying wine region. I'm talking about Bordeaux with thousand dollar bottles, complex classifications. How do you and I get started? I don't know, but I know someone who does know. It's Letty Teague. She's our Wall Street Journal wine columnist. She's here. Why are we so obsessed with the Bordeaux region? How did it get this prestige? Well, you know, the Bordelais um, were clever enough in 1855 to establish a classification system, and um, that was essentially ranking the wines first through fifth gross. And so what it is, it is complicated, but but in truth, Bordeaux is nowhere near as complicated as, say, Burgundy, because they, they well, that's did... That's good to know. Exactly. So, <laughs> so it's hard, but not as hard as it could be. Um, whereas, you yeah, know, there are these five classifications, and... And what do so those you mean, can, those classifications? You know, what it, when it was first created in 1855, and it's it's really interesting, because essentially it's remained unchanged with the exception of one elevation of Chateau Mouton, which um, was actually a second growth in the original classification, and is now a first growth. But there are five first growths, and that, that you know, essentially at the time, and even today correlated with theoretically the, the, the wine quality as right. well as the wine price. So the prestige and of the chateau. Exactly, as it was determined by the brokers. And so when you say right. growth, that doesn't actually mean the growth of the grapes. It's actually just sort of a designation for we think this is a top tier vineyard. Exactly. A cru okay. is, is, cru it, is it, whatever, the word that everyone it's, it's knows. It's a premier cru, but cru is, is translated as growth. All so right, so 1855, that's one fun fact we mm -hmm. can remember. Mm -hmm. Now what about the grapes that are actually in Bordeaux? Is it one grape that's dominant or do they have a lot of grapes that they different grapes they mix? Well, there actually are um, several grapes that are blended in um, uh, most most often on the left bank, which is uh, where all the, the, the fancy names are right. found. Um, those are Cabernet dominant grapes, okay. although it's also they're blended in with Merlot and Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot. And on the uh, the right bank, which is Pomerol, Saint-Emilion, are, are Merlot and Cabernet Franc um, grapes. dominant grapes. So if you can take away that, it's left is Cabernet um, Sauvignon and right. right is predominantly So Merlot. right, we might be able to get some more deals, it seems like some better deals on some of the wines maybe yeah, may <laughs> maybe maybe but so and I'm holding one that I might so tell mm -hmm. we're gonna sip a little of them it's a little early but you and okay. I can do it someone <laughs> has to do this hard job letting exactly can tell us about this wine and how much it's running roughly okay this is Clos Floridaine um, 2009 vintage 2009 vintage is just a stellar vintage okay. and, and and happily up oh, my glass yes um, I should have filled you first uh, please well yeah, I'm, I'm willing to wait. Um, <laughs> uh, the 2009 vintage is a, a, just a great, great vintage, and the, the good news is, is the wines are just coming into the market now, and they're just really super ripe, lush, fruit-forward, really easy wines to, to drink and to like, and this wine is made by um, a, a very well-known um, Bordeaux uh, consultant. He consults to Chateau Cheval Blanc, which is one of the great uh, chateaux, but he also makes a number of, of relatively inexpensive wines. This is a, this a is great one deal. Of them. $24. I mean, $24, you, know, you can't stellar. That. And, and, can, and this is actually from from Grave, which is cheers. on the left bank. Cheers. <laughs> and and so <laughs> what if, you know in sipping this? I mean, is there anything different you do when you sip Bordeaux? I mean, I probably not. It depends how expensive it is. Actually, ah, there yeah. you go. You should swirl Very a lot slowly. more if it's expensive. Yeah, yeah, and depending if you're buying or someone else is. I like it. Um, I'm, I'm glad. What do you think? It's I, your I, I think it's fantastic. At, at the money, the price quality ratio. She takes a lot more time mm. with her. She's better at this. And noisier too, and no doubt. <laughs> Sorry, right. that's good. <laughs> Professional let's, handicap. Let's, and let's look at a couple of other the of the reds because I want to get to white Bordeaux. I right. think some people don't right. even know there's such a I, thing as white most Bordeaux. Most probably not. Quickly run us through this one and the one over there. Okay, Chateau Perrault. Um, this is a, a a wine from the the Côte de Blaye, which is not a region that, that most people think about. It's and that's that's getting into a whole nother part of Bordeaux. Whereas people may know the big name chateau like Mouton and Lafitte. Mm -hmm. Actually, the far, the vast majority of wines are, are petit chateaux such as right. Perrault, and and this is a Merlot dominant wine. Petit, you mean just a smaller chateau? Just a small chateau. Right. It's not classified. Right. You know, it's from, from an unfashionable area. Exactly. And it's $15. So, okay. you know, it's, it's not a big investment. Uh, chateau Saint Julien, the same deal. It's a Bordeaux Superior, which is another really generic appellation, not something that there's a lot of prestige. But the beauty part is, is that in Bordeaux, because so many producers themselves have been priced out of the market, in so, insofar as um, buying up vineyard land in the right. prestige appellations, they're going to these humble places and making not so humble wines. And are we going to be able to find these here in the U.S.? Because I know that's sort of a, a challenge. You know, the retailers tend to stock these California wines, right. these big, bold wines right. with a lot of alcohol content right. in them. They think that's what we want. 
you know, any chance we're going to really be able to pick these up? You know, it's it, that's kind of a yes and no answer. Mm -hmm. um, the answer is yes, these are more readily available than than most. But right. the the no part is is because Bordeaux has been, um, you know, it, it, it's been there's there is a there's a big squeeze in the market of, of say between fifteen and thirty dollars right. a bottle. And and as you said, people are buying California wines. Americans feel more comfortable with California wines, and the association with Bordeaux is generally with a very expensive wine. Right. So there's right. a feeling of inaccessibility and also. You know, this doesn't really tell you anything, yeah. you know, about this wine. Right. Whereas you, know, they you describe know, if you don't it, know anything, right. it, it's easier to, uh, and, to go. And the labeling, of course, is still more conservative than you see on a lot of the. I mean, people are so drawn to these like big bold labels now with California exactly. wine. But the whites, um, for people who didn't even know, even there's a white obscure. Bordeaux, Bordeaux right. more obscure. I've had some. I've liked them. What's the grape? It's, grapes? A, it's a blend, of okay. course, because it's Bordeaux, so it's a blend. Um, it's a blend of Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon, and okay. maybe sometimes a little bit of Muscadel. So a little um, sweeter then. No, it's actually. Quite dry. No, they're, they're the whole another category are, are Sautern and Sautern, and Barsac. Right. So that's what you're thinking. Right, that's what I'm thinking. Also from this is also from the uh, um, uh, this did is we from the open Pesac. That? We did. We Let's did. See. We're so foresightful. Oh, Allow me to pour you so first. And so you were much politer. You poured <laughs> me first. I'm, well, I, I'm not keeping track. <laughs> and in terms of uh, it, we, with the Bordeaux region. The, the takeaway for people if they're going to go to a restaurant and mm -hmm. they want to order and they want to order something that's affordable, any particular chateaus you would say to look for? I mean, we have these that you've named. They'll be right. online in the paper. Right. Anything else? Right. You know, there there are. It's it's hard to say. Um, I would say at this point, look for something from 2009. Okay. Um, uh, it's very hard to say because the distribution of Bordeaux right now is very scattershot. Right. So I, I would be um, uh, remiss. In making a specific you okay. know, generalization, I would say, and, and also I was I was amazed at the degree to which it's difficult to find inexpensive Bordeaux. Right. Um, well, actually, I wasn't so amazed; I was disappointed because it yeah. was exactly as I suspected. You know, people are not drinking it, so sommeliers are not are not thinking to put it on their list. And, and again, because people aren't thinking they understand and, and can really get into Bordeaux, even though there are a lot of They're really affordable options. White Bordeaux is actually a little more commonly found on wine lists, less so in restaurants, because it's a wine that that sommeliers can really uh, get behind. It has really great acidity, it's a terrific food wine. And yet it's not something that a lot of people think about. And I think this is this is a this is actually um, it's a second very label. drinkable. It's yeah. great. Yeah, it's the That's a 2009. The so you're saying 2009, 2009 is, is the year folks should look for. Mm -hmm. um, other things to know, there's the left and the right bank. Pay attention to those. Uh, some of the smaller if, vineyards are on the right bank, is that right? You or know, are they really mixed? They're smaller, smaller chateau on, on both sides, different regions. So that <laughs> and the, <laughs> and the crew is really about the growth. And it doesn't actually mean the growth of the grape. It's just really the prestige of the vineyards. They were exactly. ranked back further. So that's what sort of exactly. breaks it down and makes it less scary. Yes. So, and there are only 62 of them. So if they can sit and memorize those names, well, I don't. I don't know if that'll get you, but you'll you'll at least have the satisfaction of knowing what all the crews are of the of the of the five classes. All right, <laughs> this is fantastic. Well, thank you. I feel less scared about Bordeaux already, Excellent. and uh, I have this to take away. Hopefully, I'll make it through the rest of the show. Letty Teague. <laughs> well, all right. To that. Good story Cheers. by you tomorrow. Thanks. All right. Thanks.